So mm-hmm. I got engaged for six years, left him in Jamaica. He wasn't here. I came here without him. Came here and was going back and forth to Jamaica. And he had a for visa. So, for the, but during that six, seven years. Yeah. yeah. Go, you made me fall in love, baby. Oh, baby, you made me fall in love. And first, you made me fall in love. Girl, you with my heart, that means you're getting closer. King and you're my queen and I am not a joker If me have a vote girl or you me vote for You make me come home every night as such a sporter Smell your Well I'm, I'm Lloyd Lloyd mm. Arnold Thompson um, What makes me me is um, I'm very quiet, very laid back um, I don't have a lot of friends And and. I'm of course hard working and I think I think basically that's what makes me me hard working. What career path did you actually choose? Well well growing up in Jamaica um, because my family was very very poor we grew up po- uh, you know poor mm-hmm. and um, my career I didn't choose my career my career actually chose me. Really? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So it's like a skill or a talent. Yeah, it's a, it's more like a skill. I, I you know, I, I went to a technical school, Dunham Park Technical in Jamaica, and um, <clears throat> most of the stuff that I did was pretty much hands-on. Um, I went back to um, to college and I did you know accounts for two years, yeah. but I did not see myself sitting down behind a desk. Wow. So you know wow. that wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I get a job with this company called Jerry and Neville. Oh. as a maintenance person mm-hmm. and back then I was actually working mm-hmm. as an apprentice making 50 Jamaican dollars a yes. week <laughs> <laughs> but it it, 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 it worked out it, it, uh, you know very well for me yeah you know because when I moved to the United States I've, I've never been out of a job and I've known people who, who actually pursue accounting Mm-hmm. And they were out of a job like every six months. They were out of a job, oh. and I was never out of a job. What about you? Well, Angela? my name is Sandra Thompson. I'm from Jamaica, so I have a hyphenated name. You know, when you get married, so I'm Johnson Thompson. Yeah. Um, my career path. Um, I always have the love for nursing, so mm-hmm. I work in the medical field for a long time. I started off, um, when I came here, I worked odd jobs. I came here in my 20s, early 20s, and I started working at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And then um, I worked my way up to be a manager. And then I left that and I went to work at Westchester Medical Center. The part about this that's very interesting is I was living in Queens, but I was working in Westchester County. That's like three hours away by by public transportation. I didn't have a car at the time. So I was the admitting supervisor, I was the psychiatric supervisor, and I also was an ER supervisor. So I moved my way up in the hospital working, and I worked there for 17 and a half years. And then, my husband got a promotion and we moved to Georgia. Okay. So what makes me me? I am not as quiet as him. Um, I'm not a friendly person. If you don't know me, you won't like me until you get to know right. me. Where are you from? I'm from Kingston. Kingston. Yeah, Kingston, That's Jamaica. Where you grew up? Yes, I grew up okay. in Kingston. I grew up in. Um, well, the, the the story is my my dad. <clears throat> he's a con- he was a contractor in Jamaica. Yeah. So when he met my mom, he was married. My mom found out later and she, she walked. And my mom making a better life for me and my brother, she came here to the United States with her sisters and so forth. And who you grew up with like? I grew up, my, my dad died when I was eight years old. Yeah? Yeah, so I grew up with my mom and my two sisters. Where? In, um, well, it was all over Kingston. All over <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, um, uh, we left. We we were we lived in Olympic Garden, Olympic Way, okay. and um, we left there when my father died at age twelve. So your parents were married. Were you? No, my married? parents were married. How long have you guys been together? 
We've been we've been married for for thirty three years. We've been married thirty three so, years. Yeah. So going back, um, gosh. So in total, um, you guys been together for thirty three. Are just married for thirty. Married, married, for, married for, for thirty three. Oh, so you guys even forget the, the I mean, count <laughs> stop counting. Stop counting. Stop counting. Yeah, because yeah, we day. met when we were sixteen. And 16. I, I, I'm, 58 now yeah 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 so that's some pretty good yeah these 60 years in a couple yeah so do you guys do you guys um have kids yeah we have, have two. two you have two kids yeah okay what's the story of how you guys meet actually huh. more i know from let me go with live first <laughs> <laughs> where you guys meet how you come across each other path we 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 actually met in the hallway of the school yeah yeah she she was in this little outfit that I, you know that i still joke about up to date <laughs> so, yeah, so but, but, uh, what about a uniform it, she wasn't in a no, uniform, it was it was a uniform. Oh, it was i think it was i was playing was netball she was playing netball and yeah. she was in this little white we call it crepe back then yeah in this little white <laughs> crepe <laughs> and she got some big eyes she you know looking all cute and i'm like you know not bad but <laughs> what the what <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I don't remember exactly how we actually met with each other yeah. i don't know if she does you do you remember sanjo yes yeah all right that's um, your story that was back in he plays football and i play netball as in soccer yes yes because soccer we, yeah, yeah i saw her yes yeah, soccer, soccer. Football. so you call it football right you know, so you know American ballers football. back right. then you know the guys play football um soccer you know it was like girls were all over them but anyway his friends uh one of his friends was dating one of my friends right so we used to go to you know walk take the bus and then walk downtown but one of his friends like me mm. i don't like his friend i liked him <laughs> okay so when his friend approached me and told me that he liked me i told him i don't like him so he found out that i like him so he started pursuing me oh so he meant because that's the next question who made the first move he did you made the first move yeah because i found out that she liked me because you know my friend um he was my best friend at the time george but yeah. i will never forget his name yeah, yeah. and um he moved here and then you know we just you know we just lose each other but he was the one who liked her okay and then when i found out you know you're the sticker away from him <laughs> not, 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 not only take away, away from him but um I'm, I'm, like i said i'm a quiet guy i'm i'm not quick on that kind of move back then mm -hmm. but you know for some reason it happened we start we start walking together taking the bus together yeah. you know and all that stuff so but, sandra what what was your first impression of of lloyd when you know when you guys meet i i thought he was cute um yeah. he was uh he was skinny <laughs> and he could play soccer oh he was so you know, find him attractive yes yeah. yes you know you see him playing soccer and he was very attractive not knowing anything about him i know he was on the technical side of the school because they were in the automotive side and we were on the business side yeah so you know these guys usually come over but i thought he was cute amongst you know amongst all his friends i thought he was cute what about you like what do you think about the partner the first impression she was she was she was not she was skinny too <laughs> she, <laughs> oh my god she was skinny too <laughs> flat nothing nothing up here mm -hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> but the attraction was there yeah you know the attraction the attraction was there so i did i did pursue it and um today mm. no regrets no regrets all right how long did you guys date it for like you know before the marriage we dated a long time it's the longest date we were engaged for a long time we for engaged. six years for we were remember engaged. what you guys doing what for six years you dated oh, for, wow. no for six years we, we were, were engaged. engaged oh you were engaged so, so we dated during the high school and then about my 20s before i came here we i got engaged and then i came here but the process is when one you once you're in the filing process you can't get married right because right. if you get married then i would have to do the filing myself right so because i was in the filing process with my parents with my mom to be a citizen here it was i just couldn't get married so uh -huh. i got engaged for six years left him in jamaica he wasn't here i came here without him 
Wow. Came here and was going back and forth to Jamaica. And he had a for visa. How long? So, for the, during that six, seven years. Yeah, time. Seven, back and yeah, forth. Yeah, back six, and forth. Years. Yes. And back then there wasn't any like phone that was. There was. There were public phones. Right. right. So we not like cell phones that you no, know. No, no, no. He had to no, go no. to Jam. What's in? Uh, it was. I can't remember that place on Alfred Three Road yeah. where they have these outdoor phones. Where I remember them. The yes. blue one, then where. Right. Is yeah. It, the it, one, it, it was a company book? that. Um, Jam Intel or something like that. They yeah, had to one? use. Oh, the, that's how we used to talk. So and, what about letters? We, oh yeah, we wrote yeah, a, lot we wrote a lot of letters. A lot of letters. letters. We still have them. We still have them. Oh wow, that's nice. We wrote nice. a lot of letters. That's nice. Um, do you guys remember your first date? Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It was. It was in Carib. Remember yes. when the theater was in Crossroad in Carib? Yeah, I remember. I still go there. Yeah, that was our first date. Our first kiss. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Carib. So what do you think about the first date? I'm um, Sandra. You think it was a good shot? Yeah, I, I was shy. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lord was for. Yeah. When you guys find out that things were getting serious, you know? And um, what did your family members think of your boyfriend? <laughs> and what your family member think of your girlfriend? Do you really want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> for me, I believe it, it, it's gotten serious after we graduate high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I that's think that's I when it started getting, start getting serious. Mm -hmm. Uh, because um, one of the things that, that, that pushes me was her dad. I had a hard time with her dad. Wow. For me, mm -hmm. that, that's when, yeah, when, I, when we graduated, because he graduated before me. So I think after high school, that's when I said, okay, this is the person. You yeah. Know, I need to look. Yeah. I, that's yeah. It. That was it. I need to look no more because um, he was there for me. Right. Because um, my dad was very protective and too controlling right so at one point when i went to it was um our whole school reunion mm -hmm. i went and when i came back my dad locked the gate wow so in that time there was no phone there was nothing so i i, I didn't know where i slept oh i slept at my girlfriend's house and um i had to get a bus back to my girlfriend's house in half a tree mm -hmm. and then he was supposed to meet me the next day. So did your dad know about him? Oh, yeah. He oh, ran yeah. him down many times with his car. <laughs> you, with gun and mean? everything. Run him down? Yes, yeah, every, um, chase him down with his car. The one, you run? I, yeah, the first time I went to her house, and um, I was sitting down on the, the back porch, at the front, you know, the front porch. Then, you know, we call it veranda. And um, <clears throat> I sat down on the veranda, and then the car pulled up, and everybody disappeared. I'm like... What happened? Because they knew the sound of the car. They knew everything. They knew the time he was coming. Yeah. They knew everything. So everybody disappeared. I was just sitting there by myself. And then her dad pulled up. And I think her, 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 her brother opened the gate. Came out, opened the gate for him to drive in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after like five, ten minutes, I was sitting down out there by myself. <clears throat> um, her, her brother came out and said, my dad said not to come back yeah. to this house. Yes. And I left. How did you feel? Oh my, it was terrible. It was terrible. I felt, I, I Sandra, felt how did you feel when you find out about that? Well, I felt bad, but knowing my father, yeah. um, and there was three or four girls in the house at the time and one boy, so he was just just too over no there's no boys that can come to the house. And wow. even if a boy walk on the street going on their business, he think they're looking at us or yeah. looking for us, or we know them. Wow. But that's the time. I, but I felt bad. Yeah. But he didn't run. I mean, he stick with. He stick with me. He stick right. Yeah, yeah I went back. Yeah. He went, went back. back. I came. I went back to the house. <laughs> yeah. But this time I didn't go to the veranda. I was standing at the gate, and that's when he pulled up and saw me. Yeah. And um, even now we still joke about it because he came up and he and he said. Didn't I tell him not to come back to my yard? And he, I took off running and he drove me down. <laughs> wow. And he took up wow. a rock to hit my dad. I keep saying, you took up a rock? I said, yes, really? I did. Because he was like, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to do this. And, and But I, after that, I didn't go back. No, oh, I did not go back. Because she actually moved. She had, Because um, when she when she came back from, like she said, she came. we came back from old school, mm -hmm. old student mm -hmm. um, association at school. And he locked the gate and everything. And that's when she left. So I didn't have to go back there. She was with her mom. Yeah. And her mom was a whole lot more receptive, receptive than he does. So we, I didn't go back to his house. Wow. 
Did you guys know that you were going to end up getting married? Well, for me, um, marriage was something that I wanted to do. And, um, you know, yeah, I think so. I, I think we knew we were going to get married, but when I came here, it was like, are we still going to get married? Because I came here being engaged. So right. it was like, is this still going to work with him being so far? So we had to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, so, yeah, it was a work. Right. When you were, when you guys were dating, you, did you know that you were going to marry to Sandra? Well, I didn't, I didn't, like she said, you know, we were engaged, but, you know, um, being engaged, it doesn't mean that you know for a fact that you're going to be in marriage. Right. But, I mean, I've had, during that time when I was engaged, and um, of course, there are other women, you know, come around and I'm like, I'm, I'm engaged to be married, you know, so I try to keep people off just to preserve this, you know, preserve her by you know right. the person that I'm planning to get married to, right. because you know when when you engage, it, the next step is to be married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was um, I was pretty much waiting to be married. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sandra, this question is for you. Did mm -hmm. he engage you in a any special or romantic way? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, back in the days, back in the days, um, he had a small room. He was living with his mom. And in his room, he made a box. Um, what do you call it? The speaker box. Okay. And he had, um, a, what do you call it? A two, equalizer. A equalizer. Oh, yes. yes. I know that. Wow. So he used to make CDs. So all the romantic CDs, that was him. So I remember the day that he proposed, it was in his bedroom. Wow. Yes. Okay. And music was, I mean, romance <laughs> was on. So, yeah. And he designed my ring. He didn't go pick it out. Wow. And my engagement was, ring, he designed it, it and got it made. Built. It was custom built. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Custom built. That's mm -hmm. nice. What do you like most about your husband? Um, He's a great... Let me back up. One of the things that when I got married to him, I said to him, my dad was a great provider, but not a father. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want that in my life. I mm -hmm. want a lover. I want a great provider. I want a husband. I want a father. I want a companion. I want friendship. He mm -hmm. fulfilled all of that. Wow. Yes. Wow. And, and Lloyd? She's the type of person that from a young age, she's trustworthy. Yeah. She is trustworthy. She is, is a, a, a no-nonsense person. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that I like about her. Right, right, right. Do you guys still go on dates? We do, but not as much as that we want to. Right. Um, one of the things that he always complain about, if I'm going on somewhere, I usually bring the kids. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, and he fuss about it because my kids are 26 and 23. Right, right. They're not kids anymore. They're grown folks. Right. The kids are begging her to leave me alone, Mom. Please leave me alone. And she refused to leave them kids alone. So you try to do date nights still, but she we, just... Yeah we, yeah, we have date nights like in the room We because... We don't drink, but we right. if you come into that house, you'll see an Anakin here, a dragon right. here. Yeah. And then every once in a while, we'll pick up something, you know, yeah, sit we'll in bed have, yes, and, and you know, watch a movie yeah. and you know, drink and then fall asleep. Okay, yeah. that's good. How do you guys make finances work? Because you know, in a lot of relationships, that's one of the most difficult part. I'll let him tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, when, I, when I moved here, mm -hmm. This lady had credit cards. Yeah. For every store. I, I was by myself. <laughs> you I was young. <laughs> if she should drop drop her wallet, credit card would go <laughs> or from here to down the ground. Wow. And 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 when it comes down to money, I'm always conscious of, of not buying stuff that I don't need. Okay. I mean I don't want, sorry. Mm -hmm. It has to be a need. But be, be, before and 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 one of the things that works well for me and her, we we have we have a we have a joint account. We don't have this is yours and this is mine. No, okay. We have a joint account. But like I said, she's someone that's you know very very trustworthy. So I don't have to worry about money. Right, right. My, my money. She does all the spending. 
Okay. She does everything. And it's because of the trust over the years that I have for her. I don't even buy shoe. She buy my shoes. Buy, she buy my buy underwear. Nothing. I don't buy nothing. nothing. He doesn't buy anything. Nothing. Oh. He buys tools. I tools. buy tools because yeah. she don't know nothing about tools. Yeah. So right. I buy tools. But the one thing I don't like when she buy for me is shoes. I like to be there to fit my shoes because sometimes when the yeah. shoes come home, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. Right. So that's the one thing I don't like. But when it comes on to to, to finance, it's it's I'm. I think I'm I'm more conscious more than she does because all them credit cards. I remember when um, <clears throat> when we sold our house in New York and we moved on here. I said to her, "We cannot move from New York to Georgia with New York bills." Mm -hmm. And the little money that we make, I didn't buy a house. Get rid of credit cards, pay off everything, right. and it was actually starting over for us here in Georgia. How do you guys balance work and home life? You know because since you guys chose different career path and i know that you guys had to be working and so on you know so how you balance that the work and home life do you guys have conflicts with that or no know? um when we when we first moved down here the thing that that worked because the kids were small when we moved down here um i remember when she took my son to um to elementary was it elementary school yeah yeah elementary school and the teacher um, call her up and said my son can't read but it's not that he couldn't read mm -hmm. it's because Georgia was ahead when it comes on to, to schooling mm -hmm. as opposed to New York they were ahead yeah, so they thought different. he couldn't yeah. read oh, wow. and she took it to heart I mean she gave up everything and stayed home for yeah, more than 10 working. years she I stopped stop work working. for more than 10 years and stayed home with this kid I mean she cried when the teacher mm -hmm. tell her that right and um she, you know, she stayed home and, and, and she worked with these kids. She drove them through school and I changed shift. I went to work at nights instead of working at days. Oh, wow. Yeah, I took um, the night shift instead of days. Instead of days. Yes. To and accommodate, she, yeah. To accommodate them. She didn't work. I did all the working. Wow. Okay. And it was different when we were in New York because in New York, um, we took different shifts. My job was so demanding that I work in the daytime. But I go to I went to school. I was going to nursing school, mm -hmm. so it was so funny because he works at night, so somebody could always be in the house. So when I drove in at nighttime, coming from from school, he was driving out. I was in the parking lot. So for years, that's how our life was. He, wow. While I'm driving in, he's driving out for years. For years. And <clears throat> for and years. You guys still make it work. We did. We had to. So when we came down here, we said certain things just got to change. So I stayed on with the kids, and he went to work. But at the end of the day, it worked out for us because I was home with the kids now. Right. He was working, so he got to see us. So, so was, it was, it hard, was it hard raising the kids? Was it hard since that was going on? It wasn't hard, but you know, you know, there comes a time when it was the financial <coughs> strain. Mm -hmm. You know, from because we actually gave up two. We gave up one. We, well, it's actually one paycheck, right. but the cost of living um, is is a little. Is, is much, is cheaper, much here. cheaper here so we were able to make things work yeah we made it we made it work because I as I said I didn't work and um, when I I think I just graduated college mm -hmm. and I had a when he got a promotion he came down here to find some for us to live and I was home going to school raising the kids trying to sell the house that we were in and I had a heart attack Wow. <clears throat> the stress was so much and um, it was just too much and um, so when I came down here he said uh-uh so I stayed home for quite a while and he went to work and the kids did great did you guys create boundaries right to protect the marriage but you, you know what um, I, I don't think we we actually create any boundaries because I'm the type of person I think once you're married, mm -hmm. you have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, you have to be more responsible. And one of the things that I've always said um, is kids did not ask ask us to come, to come in the world. Right. We're the one who had all the fun and bring these kids in the world. So it's our responsibility to take care of them. And I make that my duty. I don't have no baby mama drama. Right. I have no kids over the place. 
I have none of that. I only got two kids. And I was there with them from the day they were born up until now. They're still inside the house. That's good. So I didn't so, set any boundaries. No I boundaries. know my responsibility. The boundaries that I set uh, when it comes on to marriage for me, um, certain things, I'm an outspoken person. Mm -hmm. So certain things I'll tell him that you can't do. Um, and that includes like, you know, like he works with female. Mm -hmm. So, ne you know, this country that we're in, mm -hmm. you got to put yourself, you got to try not to put yourself in certain situations. Like don't be in a room with a female alone, you know, so those kind of boundaries, right. but boundaries for the family. Right. Um, there's th the only thing right. is just be there for us. Oh, okay. That's it. I know every marriage and relationship right, has their own struggles, problems, and everybody is different. How do you guys get through the rough patches? You know, argument, conflicts, disagreements, when them arise. How do you guys deal with that? For me, one of the things that over the years that I, I promise that I'll never do is that no matter how we fuss or we have disagreement or whatever, we will still talk and nobody will know. Me and him will have an argument inside that house, but if anybody comes in my house, they will not know. It's none of your business. Right. So we keep that to ourselves. But when it go upstairs and it's just me and him alone in that room, it's on again. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've always promised myself, he always sleep in his bed. I'll never ever tell him he can't sleep in my room or on his bed. Yeah. We might not be, right. but if we're on the bed. <laughs> right, yeah, right, but right, that's right. something that over the years we have never done. He's always slept in his room. We have never said, oh, let me sleep in another room or go to the couch. Never. Mm. Yeah, so you, that's how I make it. How do you deal with it, Lord? It's, 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 um... <clears throat> For me, it's a little bit hard because I don't like when she's not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I just give her like a, a couple of days to get over it. But, you know, like she said, we talk. We talk. We might not speak for two or three days about it. But like day four, we, you know, we said, you know what? Come on. We got to We got to fix this. Mm -hmm. And we talk. Right, right. Right. So, and I think that's that's yeah. the most important thing that we talk. The cliche is that don't go to your bed when you're angry. That's not possible. It's not possible. You you will go to bed angry and upset. You know, people always say, tell young couples when they're getting married, oh, don't go to you. That's going to happen, but don't stay in that position too long. Right, right. You know, don't stay in that space too long. Talk about it. How social media and technology of today's world impact or change the dynamic of the marriage does it change it in any way or does it impact it in any way because you know to the technologies with the social media the phones and all these things <laughs> you know i'm probably back when you guys were younger you know and that it wasn't that prominent we don't have for we us don't. we don't have social media we don't do social media we don't have facebook we don't twitter, have Snapchat, twitter Snapchat, whatever Snapchat. it is no no, no we our don't have kids it. have it they tell us what's going on mm. but for for technology um, one thing I always tell him, if you're out, we always check in because we have a group text. I like for my family to check in and say, I'm okay. You don't have to be a long talk. This one in the, hey, did you get to work? Okay, you're okay? Yes, that's it. That's how technology help us. Are you on your way home? Yes, that's it. Technology help us that kind of way. But otherwise, yeah. we don't, we, we, Technology has helped us with the smart TV because he would like watch Western. Right. So I'll watch it with him and he'll in turn watch some of my, he called them sappish, sappy oh shows. God. Yeah, he'll watch sappy, them with sappy, me. Sappy. <laughs> so. well, all right. So what about this? This next one is seen um, on the topic of like technology is more like cell phones now because you know, young people, privacy, all these phones have lock codes and all that. What about privacy with you guys in terms of? cell phone codes and, and so on no i know his passcode he knows my passcode for my phone everything it's no secret no secret because yeah, if i have to hide something that's really bad and so you think and and even though i we know we don't check yeah she don't check my phone i don't check her i don't have any reason to be checking her phone yeah she does i gave her my phone and said hey um send a text um perfect example i was sending a text to my sister mm -hmm. and i was texting hey and i <laughs> <laughs> and then I wake up and I'm texting again. She said, give me the phone and tell me what you want to say. Right, right, she, right. She sent the text. She yeah. finished the text, wrote the text, and sent it for me. And I was, I, 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 
went to bed. Yeah, I was so fast asleep. In 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 a broad retrospect, then. So you think this phone code that these couples have on their phones and so on. Do you what do you think about that? You know, in general. My personal feeling on that, if you're gonna have to protect your phone from your spouse, your wife, that I, I believe that you have something to hide. I think mm -hmm. there should be some kind of freedom. You know, we all, we respect each other's privacy. I'm not going to go through his phone or he's not going to go through my phone. Or if he's texting, I'm looking over it. There got to be some kind of trust level right there. And if, you, if, you, if, if you're going to spend that kind of energy to do that, it's that not even, sense. it makes no sense. Makes no but sense. at the same time, there's a lock code on my phone. There's a lock code on his phone, his iPad and everything. But we can still go in each other's stuff. Okay. But we don't, you know, we don't deliberately pick it up and go in and search. Yeah. No, I don't do that. Oh, okay. Okay. What do you guys, um, what would you guys say to some young couples in, is the secret or the formula to a good, long, loving and lasting marriage? I think that the, the, the secret is trust. Um, if, if, when you get married, there are things you're going to have to give up for your marriage to work. Mm -hmm. You can't go hang out with the boys every day, every week, come home drunk. Women, women can't stand that. Yeah. So there are things you're going to have to give up for your marriage to work. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't go out and, and, and um, hang out with no boys. Mm -hmm. I grew up with all women in my house. Mm -hmm. So I'm more leaning towards the women. When it comes down to women, I have a lot of compassion for women because that's who I grew up with. So, you know, the bottom line is you have to trust that person. You have to, um, like I said, you have to give up stuff for your marriage to work. Right, right. What do you think, Sandra? I think what trust. Formula, yeah? I think trust is the main thing and you still have to have a life. Um, you're married, but you still need to have your life. You still have to have some kind of outside friendship. Right. So, like, for me, I still have girlfriends that I will hang with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of male friends, you know, so to speak. But you still need to still do that part. But it can't be, as he said, a every weekend thing or every night thing. You're hanging out with the boys or whatever. Also, you have to make your partner your friend. You That person has to be that person you call no matter what. Mm -hmm. The first person you call something happened that's the person you call then you can call your girlfriend if you have to call your girlfriend and your husband that doesn't make it you right. got to call that person that person has to be your backbone that person right. has to be that person you know if you fall will get you up if you're crying will comfort you and you know we still have stuff that we we're not comfortable with but you have to have that comfort with right. that person right. You, right. you have to or else that that person has to know your faults, your ins, your out. You know, there's still little things you might keep to yourself, but mm -hmm. you know, it you shouldn't can. be nothing. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give to a newly wedded couple? Any of you? What advice would you give? Just just take it one day at a time. That would be my advice. Take marriage. Marriage is a journey. It's not gonna. It's gonna not gonna um, be perfect on the, the first month or the first year or it's going to take time or years after mm -hmm. it's going to you, you're still getting to know the person marriage so, is a continuous stuff it doesn't it, 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 it I still fall in love with him mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter because I, I see him uh, we've been married for such a long time and you know I still see him and I'm like you know like when he was shaving his beard i'm like oh you look handsome you know mm -hmm. that kind of stuff i'll see him mm -hmm. in, a, in a shirt or something i'm like you look good in that shirt mm -hmm. you know you still have to give compliments. compliment to that person you still gotta find ways to keep that love going um so it's not it's it's a work in progress it doesn't stop marriage mm -hmm. is it doesn't stop it does not stop it's always work and wow. don't let your guard down because your marriage will get stale Yes. And the last question, all right? If you guys get a second chance to redo your life, do you think you would have still chose each other to be your life yes. and partner? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would. I, I would. Yeah. yeah. I would. I would. I would choose her, Adam. But I would ask her to stay away from Goodwill and flea market. <laughs> <laughs> she. If I can't. If I can't find her. 
Oh, I'm a bargain shopper. She's a bargain shopper, and 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 one of the thing I I I'm, I must tell you this, uh, you know who she really is. I remember when I was in New York, I I buy a pair of shoes for her. I think it cost like a hundred and twenty four dollars. Yeah, it was two pairs of shoes for her, and she knew because she she has been living in White Plains before. She knew White Plains like the back of her, and so she knew exactly where I bought the shoe and all of that. And she went to the store and she found out how much I paid for the shoe. And she came on and she said, "Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many shoes, I, pair of shoes, I can get for this?" <laughs> and it was her, it was for Christmas. And you know what she did? She took the shoe back, and wow. she came home with bags on her hands. And she said, <laughs> "Look what I got for them for one hundred and twenty-four dollars." <laughs> Yeah, and it was, it was nice. It was nice. Shoes. It was nice. Outdoors. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It was outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm a shopper. I, I I like to shop. I like to you know, he as I said before, he's the one. He yeah. when we're going on vacation. He just show up. Wow. He doesn't know what's in his suitcase. Okay. Doesn't know, but um, the advice you know, I would I would, if I know, mm -hmm. what I know now, I I, I You're going good. in, I'll definitely. You would. I would because I'm. Uh, I like stuff the way I like it. I and like he's comfort. Perfect. Right. And he's perfect he did all of mind. this. He did all of this. So. Yeah, he's my guy. Right. Most of this is my hands on. <laughs> yeah, he, he's my guy. All, all right, I'm gonna show it in a minute. You know, I just want to thank you guys, honestly, yeah. from the bottom of my heart. Oh, no problem. It was a pleasure listening to you guys, you know, and um, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.